pastor of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, allow me to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of you and your families a blessed and Merry Christmas, which we gather to celebrate this morning. Malcolm Muggeridge, the 20th century British journalist who had been an atheist for most of his adult life and who came to the Catholic faith in the autumn of misspent years, he uh, titled his memoirs uh, Chronicles of Wasted Time. Reflecting on the world, wrote that what he, through most of his life, had taken to be a theater, excuse me, of the absurd, proved on closer examination to contain within itself a fearful symmetry, revealing the meaning that lies embedded in meaninglessness, the order underlying confusion, the indestructible love at the heart of the Holocaust of hate, the still small voice of truth that makes itself heard above the thunderous falsity. Indeed, Muggeridge discovered in his conversion from atheism to the Catholic faith what the truly great minds of the Western world, men such as Dante and Shakespeare, had always known, that it is love that moves the sun and the other stars, and that the cosmos is the first and the greatest love story. Indeed, when understood correctly, one can say truthfully that they knew as Muggeridge finally came to understand that they lived not in a random, meaningless universe, a world without purpose, but in an enchanted world, a world, a cosmos, which has been sung into existence. And they knew it to be an enchanted world because the word enchantment comes from the Latin cantare, which means to sing as in Gregorian chant, and has nothing to do with the modern corruption of language, which has made enchantment synonymous with bewitchment, which corruption, as with all corruption, is the work of Satan, Lucifer, the fallen angel, the father of lies, chaos, sin and death, who would have us believe the lie that the universe and our lives in it are meaningless. Christmas tells us profoundly that they are not. And so in the reading of the gospel of Christmas, the good news, we learn the truth from the God who in love created the cosmos and you and me. And this gospel fulfills an ancient prophecy of Isaiah uttered over 700 years before that first Christmas. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which, as Matthew teaches us, means God with us. And so we have read, and it came to pass that when they were there, Mary's days were accomplished, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him up in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Here in the arms of Mary is a fragile babe who is the incarnation of the immutable God, the indestructible love, at the heart of the holocaust of hate, the still small voice of truth making itself heard above the thunderous falsity of a world in rebellion against him. Here we behold an infant, the eternal word of the Father made manifest in a speechless child, speaking eloquently, at least to those who have ears to hear, the infinite wisdom of love. It is here and here alone, in this child born to us on Christmas, therefore, that is to be found the real and only definitive answer to the devastating, debilitating effects of evil in our world and in our lives. For in this child, the divine nature and our human nature are joined in the inseparable union of the one divine person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 
as the angels sang. This child is therefore the savior of the world. Neither is there salvation in any other, as Peter the Apostle proclaims, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. This means that the real answer to the ravages of war and hatred is this child born to us. In the life of sanctifying grace, he makes possible in our lives. The answer to famine, the fruit not of a lack of food or resources, but a lack of love, the poison of the sins of selfishness and greed, is this child born to us. In the life of sanctifying grace, he makes possible in your life and in mine. The answer to so many ruined marriages and devastated lives left in their wake is this child born to us in the redeeming life of sanctifying grace he makes possible. The answer to scandals in the world and in the pilgrim church is this child born to us in the life of cleansing and sanctifying grace he makes possible for you and for me. The answer to the loneliness of those abandoned by those who should care for them is this child born to us. In a word, the answer to sin, chaos, and death is Jesus. Born to us this day, for this baby, the Son of Mary, is the eternal Son of God, and he has come to set us free, truly free, from our real enemies, Satan, the bondage of sin, chaos, and ultimately, death. In this there is indeed a fearful symmetry. For to accomplish this Herculean task, which no mere man or multitude of men can accomplish, or all the nations come together as one, for that matter, this child born unto us is destined for the cross. All the hatred, all the malice, all the lust and wickedness of men, all the hatred, malice, lust, and wickedness in your heart and mine shall be shouldered by him as he is willingly nailed to the cross and sheds his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And yet, in that holy life, which of necessity leads to the sacrifice of Calvary, which began in earnest in the manger of Bethlehem on that first Christmas morning celebrated by choirs of angels, we see the indestructible love at the heart of the holocaust of hate, the still small voice of truth that makes itself heard above the thunderous falsity. The birth of this child is therefore the heart of the Catholic faith. This is the meaning of Christmas. This is the meaning of the cosmos. This is the meaning of your life and mine. And this is certainly the meaning of the Mass we celebrate this midnight. Jesus Christ, in his person and work on the cross, is the sine qua non of whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious in this fallen world. And this and he are inseparable from the holy sacrifice of the Mass we celebrate this Christmas night. And that's why, in God's providence, regardless of why you may think you came here, you have come here. For the Eucharist is the babe of the manger of Bethlehem, brought to consummation in the sacrifice of Calvary, hidden in weakness and humility upon the altar of his grace, body and blood, soul and divinity, made present for you and for me. As we learn from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, no one, whether shepherd or wise man, can approach God here below except by kneeling before the manger at Bethlehem and adoring him hidden in the weakness of a newborn babe. The Holy Eucharist does not appeal to a fallen world. In fact, that fallen world hates it. Nor does it appeal to the arrogance of fallen human nature, 
in rebellion against God. For the Mass is centered in this fearful symmetry of a virgin mother and her infant destined for the cross, celebrated at Christmas, made present upon this altar, even tonight. But here, for those who have eyes to see, behold indestructible love. Here, for those who have ears to hear, however faintly, hear the still, small voice of truth. His name is Jesus. He is the Son of God, so his word can be trusted implicitly. Don't listen to the world. He is the Son of Man, invested with infinite, eternal authority. So his word of forgiveness can be received instantly and eagerly. He is the Lamb, who is the conquering Lion of Judah, who, like his father David, went out in the name of the Lord to fight the towering enemy of God's people, and in the cross he has conquered. Here we are to direct our eyes and hearts away from ourselves and focus instead on Christ, the seed of the Virgin Mary, who crushed the head of Satan, the ancient serpent, and now sits on his throne at the right hand of the Father to do what? To intercede for you and to intercede for me. He is the slain lamb, for this is exactly how he won the victory. And his precious blood has not only freed us from the devil's oppression and lethal domain, but also purchased and cleansed us that we might belong to the living God and belonging live, truly live. For on this glorious feast of Christmas, as our first reading from the prophet Isaiah proclaims, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And his name is Jesus. And so I end this homily as I began, and from the bottom of my heart, in every fiber of my being, I wish you and yours a very merry and blessed Christmas in the Christ, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now this moment, on this feast of Christmas, in this holy sacrifice of the Mass, and for the rest of our lives, Veniti adoremus Dominum. Come, let us adore him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.